to Spa Francochamp, host of round four for this ELMS season and kicking off the second half of the season. Now, it's a very special track that we are at, just over seven kilometers long with 19 corners, including some absolutely iconic ones, including Radion. Now, it's been over a month since the last ELMS race. And so let's take a little look about what the atmosphere is like inside the paddock. I think it's been a big fight all season in the ELMS. I mean, this season in particular has been, you know, the level of uh, depth in talent has been huge. You know, you can really swing the momentum if one team has a bad result, one team has a good one and really use that as momentum. Whether it's in qualifying the drivers at the start or at the end to try and win the race, it's always a big battle. Um, and the four hours go very fast when, when you're in the, the heat of the battle. I've always been uh, quite lucky here and hopefully I can use some of that luck this weekend. Uh, yeah. It was a long time due that we wanted to do a strong result in the LMS and um, it's always important to, to keep everybody, you know, focus on the target. That's what we did in Imola. It was, uh, it was important to make that switch before the summer break. Uh, here we are back in Spa and of course, I mean, for me, it's always special to race here. It's my home race. For the entire team, the intention and the, um, the motivation is extremely high. We want to do a strong weekend. We want to have a good race. But most importantly, we want to do a good operation for the championship. I think everybody has changed, especially I think that all the war here will be quite, quite, quite tight in, in Spa. In Imola, we did a good step with the with the car. Before Imola, we were like P, P7, P8 in the championship. Now we are P2. I think we have a good car, a good baseline. With all of us three, we have our strengths. I think that's making us, you know, a, a good, a good team. Yeah, I've really enjoyed the first three weekends so far. Uh, yeah, straight away being teammates with Robert and Louis before the season, they've really helped me a lot to, to kind of learn endurance racing. The results have been okay so far. I think we've been quite consistent. Yeah, hopefully we can we can get a win soon. I think the car's fast and so far uh, I think all three of us have done quite a good job. So hopefully it'll happen soon. <laughs> One of our drivers, Richard de Gerus, is a very ambitious driver. Currently driving for the number 28 Edex Sport, and they are placed number fourth in the standings. Let's discover a little bit more about him. To be honest, for me, the better way to start the day is to start with push from the legs. Huh? <laughs> this is my. Uh my optimal food <laughs> to start the day. Double espresso is because you are too relaxed. <laughs> I'm a kind of person who is very calm, so <laughs> I need to be a bit stronger to start the day. <laughs> I am doing a sports car endurance racing, very long races. So we need to be relaxed. We can't be like stressful uh, going to, to a race because if not, we are losing a bit of concentration or, or whatever. Yeah, going through the, the race weekend, I always come with uh, my manager, Bastien, uh, which is a re really nice person. Uh, I'm working with him since last year and we have a very professional relationship, but also a friendship uh, relationship, I would say. I can be in this big brother uh, role. He knows that I'm around, and if there is anything that he needs to know or ask, I'm here. And sometimes, you know, at night, we say, okay, we, we just make a review of the day. I would like to see a, a clean lap. I think Facebook should be good. Yeah, I really want to have, uh, not also people that I'm working with, but, uh, I want to share good time with my friend and he's the uh, best combined, I would say, because I can work with him, we can be serious when we want. On the wet, 
one of the strongest. Also now, since the start of the season, I they start to be my family, I would say, which is a really good moment. We take care of each other, which makes the, the weekend going easier for everybody. So that's really, really good and I enjoy to be, to be with them and that makes me really calm and smooth. Uh, which is uh, really enjoyable. And I think we are showing very good performance since the start of the season. For sure, it was a big, uh, it was a big uh, accomplishment for everybody in Le Mans. Uh, it was the first podium of IDEC uh, in Le Mans, so I'm really proud to be able to, to take part and to accomplish that for, for the team. First part of the session was very messy and let's Let's hope for some clean laps to really see the potential of the car on long run. But enjoy, have a good one. Okay, now five seconds. So I remind you, so we have new full brakes, new full brakes by the team. We need only two of them. The dream for us is to win the ELMS Championship. We are actually fourth uh, coming here to Spa, Francorchamps. It's uh, really tight. The competition is so high this year in ELMS. So now uh, there is still three races to go. We will work as much as possible to, to fight for the championship until the end. We have started the four hours of Spa. The start is under investigation. Hopefully I'm not taking the start at Sunday, so I, I hope we will be out of, uh, of trouble for the start. But for sure last year it was quite chaotic, it was a difficult race, a lot of safety car, a lot of, uh, lot of stuff going on. So we'll see this year, I think it's going to be not the same than before. And I need to be at the top, I want to be at the top, I want to be a professional driver. So. I'm racing against professional driver in LMP2, so I need to be as best as possible, and and also I take need to need to maximize everything. It's building his package as a professional driver, technical feedback and everything, and I think he has what it takes to be a factory driver, and we are here to to push him, and uh, hopefully in, within the next year he will. He will achieve that and get the factory drive to, to be in Ipoca. The most important is to do any mistake. We can't do any mistake. Let's uh, keep like this and we'll see what we'll finish at the end. the second half of the season who is on top in terms of the overall standings well it's the number 43 into europol competition let's meet team manager sasha fassbender and see what he has to say about the strategy for the team's success you know for, for us, it's, it's, it's a team sport, and the team result stays overall. Um, we're working all six, each six drivers in LMP2 together for the best performance of both cars in the race. Um, yeah, the season started for us quite ish, and uh, in Barcelona we had struggled a little bit at the first race, but we scored important points already for the championship. And then we going to Paul Ricard, where the team looked till the last 20 minutes for the first one to win in ELMS. Cars were very competitive and um, the strategy worked well, but unfortunately we lost one car with a gearbox issue leading the race. And, but lucky we had the car on P2 that won the race there. Um, our car 43 that leads the championship from then on. Um, Imola, we had a technical issue in the uh, outlap to, uh, to the in the recognition lap. Uh, unfortunately, we had to start from the pit lane. That made not our race easy. I still believe that the uh, 34 can come back in the championship fight as well. 
For me, always when we're starting the race, I'm sitting in the office in front of my desk and I'm just focusing, oh, the yellow and green cars are still running and they're not offside the track. So, and I have to hope that I don't have to take any decision to bring the result in the right direction. Time is fast approaching, but before they head into battle, there's a chance for the thousands of fans to see the drivers and the cars up close, to collect some interviews, and to see the stunt bike show. Spa Francorchamps is rammed with excited spectators, eager to see all the action at round four of the European Le Mans series. Paul in LMGT3 went to the Iron Lynx Lamborghini number 63 thanks to a great lap from Hiroshi Hamaguchi. In LMP3, young girl Julian put the RLR M Sport number 15 car on pole position by just four hundredths of a second. Rodrigo Salas claimed the pole in LMP2 Pro-Am with the number 29 rigid meal by TDS car. Louis Delatraz was on qualifying duty for AO by TF and put them on the LMP2 pole by more than four tenths of a second.
Safety car lights are off. Johnny Edgar on pole in the red and white AO by TF Car. There's the team waiting. Manuel Maldonado alongside for Panis. We are about to get the race underway. Lights go off, here we go, the charge down to the first corner. Johnny Edgar leads, but up into second, into Europol already. Sebastian Alvarez going by, Manuel Maldonado, no contact in LMP2. They're cleanly through. LMP3 looks good as well, and here comes the GT field. Looks like everybody might make it through. AO by TF, the leaders into Europol, jumping into second. And the lime green Lamborghini of Hiroshi Hamaguchi still leading from pole in LMGT3. There he is with the rest of the field strung out behind him already. Going back car, that's Algar Pros. Matthias Kaiser challenging Ryan Cullen. They're side by side behind through Le Combe. It's going to be a busy opening lap. It's Europol looking down the inside. Clement Novalak trying to go by. Takes fifth place away from Algarve Pros, Matthias Kaiser. Good start from both into Europol cars. Up to Lacombe they come. All battle behind. That's the Iron Links Proton car of Jonas Reed. And Ben Hanley goes the long way around the outside. And United's 22 car picks up ninth place. That was a brave move. LP3 leader under pressure and a change as they exit the hairpin over the curbs. Torsten Kratz, he loses more ground, but Miguel Cristobal for cool racing dive bombed him at La Source and he is through into the lead. And now the RLR M Sport car and into Europol third and fourth look like they're closing on WTM by Rinaldi. And here comes the pack. Jostling behind into Europol, Alexander Bukansov is Julian Zerbi. Doesn't quite get by the uh, yellow, orange and black Team Virage car. This is a great little battle in the pack. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth all together. The into Europol car looking for a move, doesn't get it, but Julian Zerbi does all the way around the outside of Brussel. Is he going to be able to hang on? Has he got enough room on the exit? Yes, he does. Great move. Moves ahead of Alexander Bukantsov. He's up to fourth. And the tail of that queue, Matthew Bell in the Euro International car. He's looking for a move as well. Can't quite squeeze through there. Battle for fourth in LMGT3. The yellow car guys racing car. That's the Kessel Racing Ferrari of Takeshi Kimura. All over the back of him is the Iron Dames. That's the Porsche of Sara Bovi, the magenta and white car. They've had three poles this season, the Iron Dames. Not here in Spa, though. Sara's home circuit. They won last time out. They're hoping for another big result. Fourth in the points. Here's the battle for third. The cool racing car with the blue nose. That's Lorenzo Fluxer. Manuel Maldonado started on the outside of the front row of the grid, got jumped a bit at the start at La Source, keeping his nose clean, which is always wise, but he's down to fourth. There's a big queue behind, look at this. Ryan Cullen for Vector Sport leading the into Europol car. That's the battle from fifth to ninth. Last year's F1 Academy champion Martin Garcia there with Kathy Muller. They're watching in the Iron Dames garage. And there is the Iron Dames car of Sara Bovi with Matt Griffin's Ferrari now ahead of Takeshi Kimura. Then Martin Berry, the grid motorsport by TF Aston. Sean-Henri Samini for AF Corsa, another Ferrari. And Mike Wainwright dives to the inside of him. So all sorts of battles going on in this queue. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth in LNGT3. MP3, this is the battle for second around the outside. Julian Zerbi, but Cool Racing's Miguel Cristobal doesn't give him room. Don't think there was contact, but through on the inside goes Matthew Richard Bell in the Euro International car, the blue and red. So Julian Zerbi, instead of going up one, went down one. He's gone from third to fourth. And it is still Miguel Cristobal for Cool Racing in second. Trouble here, John Hartshorn in the JMW Motorsport Ferrari collecting Ryan Cullen and the Algarve Pro car of Matthias Kaiser. Then a hard hit with the wall. Safety car is out for clear up. 
that might be the end of the race for the JMW Ferrari and possibly for Algarve Pro. Safety car out. And John Hartshaw, well, that's the good news. He is out of the car, but that looks pretty heavily damaged. Race leader Johnny Edgar's lead has evaporated. It's John Falb who leads LMP2 Pro-Am for Nielsen. Torsten Kratz in LMP3. And Hiroshi Hamaguchi, the pole man, still in charge in LMGT3. The field will close up behind the safety car, but for now there's not much drivers, teams or families can do but wait for the restart. Safety car has pulled back in. So Johnny Edgar leads the field. Right behind him, Sebastian Alvarez for Inter Europol made a great start at the beginning of the race. Let's see if he can make a great restart 30 minutes later. No, not quite on the leader's tail. Johnny Edgar gets the hammer down very well indeed. He races away from Sebastian Alvarez and Lorenzo Frusa. Little ducking and diving behind between Ryan Culler and the two United machines who ride on board with Lorenzo Frusa. Cool racing in third, streaming down the hill into a rouge. And Hedion climbing up in front of us. Good run. You can just see him closing on the inter Europol car as they started to come up the hill. And there's United Auto Sports' Ben Handy. He's now the better of the two cars attacking the Vector Sport car of Ryan Cullen. Well, the Algarve Pro Machine there, 25, is still going. Tight battle at the head of LMGT3, Hiroshi Hamaguchi from Pole, still the leader. There's Matt Griffin in fourth place for Spirit to Race, closing in on Sarah Bovey. She's up to third, and she's challenging Johnny Larson in the Formula Racing Ferrari, who's in second. She looks to the inside. Griffin's looking to the outside. Three wide at Le Combe. Who comes out of this in front? Johnny Larson does. No, Matt Griffin is still there, comes back on behind the other Ferrari, but ahead of Sarah Bovey. Replay at Ready On, that's Cool Racing's Miguel Cristoval, looping spin. Luckily, everybody avoided him, but only just. Sebastian Alvarez into the pits for Inter Europol, in from second place. They're having a great race so far. Manuel Maldonado at Panis. Oh, the wheels are going under the car, that's not good news. Fresh tyres ready for AO by TF's Johnny Edgar. All change in LMGT3. It's now Iron Links from Iron Dames. And at the back of the queue, Johnny Larson for Formula Racing. Sarah Boving having a look at the pole sit to Hiroshi Hamaguchi. He's in the Lamborghini, she's in the Porsche. And then Matt Griffin in third ahead of Johnny Larson. Oh, it's going to be close here. She cuts the inside of turn four. So she can't really take advantage. She's got more speed. She needs to do something though, because Matt Griffin is right with them. Is this going to be three wide again? Matt Griffin goes outside, looking inside, tucks underneath the Iron Dames Porsche. Side by side at Le Combe. Sarah Bovey on the curbs, contact with Matt Griffin. Johnny Larson's off as well. Disaster. And there is the reaction in the garage. Sarah Bovey just lost the car on the curbs on the inside. Slid into Matt Griffin. Johnny Larson had nowhere to go. Take a look again. So watch the pink Porsche out wide on the inside Matt Griffin's Ferrari and over the curbs. The Porsche just snaps out of control. She can't keep it away from the Ferrari and Johnny Larson's got nowhere to go. Hiroshi Hamaguchi may not have seen any of that, but he'll suddenly find himself all alone. Sarah Bovey continues on her way. Doesn't look like there's too much damage. Virtual safety cars have everybody down to 80 kilometers an hour. She's in the pits. Matt Griffin, unfortunately, seems to have suffered worse. There's the Spirit of Race car, and they are out. Matteo Cairoli patiently awaiting his turn in the Iron Lynx Proton LMP2 car, started by Jonas Reed. And a new leader in LMP2, it is Inter Europol's Sebastian Alvarez. John Falb still in front in LMP2 Pro-Am. Torsten Kratz leads LMP3 and Hiroshi Hamaguchi still leads in LMGT3. We go back to green. Oh, and already somebody spinning out to the final corner. 
That is Jean-Baptiste Simonard in the Duquesne car number 30. Hopefully they'll all avoid him. Meanwhile, it is Sebastian Alvarez who leads the field down the hill. Algar Pro, after that contact early on, still in third place and very much in the hunt ahead of Vector now. And it is Philip Ogran now in the Leeds United Auto Sports car. So Matthias Kaiser in third place. Johnny Edgar weaving to heat his tyres. So too is Ryan Cullen for Vector Sport. And there is Philip Ogran ahead of the Edex Sport car. Now, what happens here? Don't think JB Simonau got hit from behind. I think he just gassed it up on the exit of the bus stop. Hiroshi Hamaguchi overrunning La Source. Here's Ryan Cullen attacking for third place. Round the outside of Matthias Kaiser. Doesn't get through past the Algarve Pro car. Comes back on, back where he was. No, he doesn't. Philip Ugrand's alongside. But Ugrand, just the tiniest of contact. Half spin, avoids the barriers. I think he was trying to avoid hitting Ryan Cullen there. And Cullen on the inside, Matthias Kaiser fights back, but Ryan Cullen takes the place. He's up to third now. Lead battle in LMGT3, Hiroshi Hamaguchi ahead of Sara Bovi and contact. Hamaguchi slower, I think, than the Porsche expected. Now, has he got an issue? Axel Jeffries can't believe what's going on here. Safety car, we are under safety car. Leader, slow down, we are under safety car. Well, it's been a dramatic race already for Iron Lynx and the Iron Dames. The good news is Hiroshi Hamaguchi is okay, but the Iron Lynx Lamborghini is out. Replay here. Matthew Bell on the outside in the Euro International car, trying to go around Torsten Kratz and knocked into the gravel. On board, there's the contact. Matteo Crisoni awaiting pit stops. He's probably not the only one. Safety car is in the pits. Track is now green. No overtaking before the line. No overtaking before the line. Sebastian Alvarez in the yellow and green car has been very good at the start and the restart, but what about Johnny Edgar? He's now behind, but the interior pole car racing away for the line very quickly. Vector Sports Ryan Cullen in third, Algar Pro in fourth, but it's all about the lead battle now. Can Johnny Edgar, the red and white AO by TF Sport car, grab the lead? They, of course, as 83 car leading in the LMP2 Pro Am, WTM by Rinaldi, Torsten Kratz still in front in LMP3. And the field is very strung out now, and that means a cleaner restart. Sebastian Alvarez heads down the hill into Eau Rouge. Johnny Edgar right with him. Ryan Cullen out wide, but safe for the moment from Matthias Kaiser in fourth place. Leaders heading up the long, steep Kemmel Strait. And at the top of the picture, cool racing. Lorenzo Fluxet going around. David Heinemeyer Hansen in the Nielsen racing car. So he picks up a spot. While Carl Bennett for cool defence against our LMP2 Pro Am leader Francois Perodo. Trouble at Radiol, that's Johnny Larson in the Formula Racing car, and the other car, that's Richard Beale by TDS, Gregoire Sosi, the LMP2 Pro Am car. It looks like they have made contact. Oh, well, I didn't see what triggered that, but spinning in sympathy, there was contact between them, and they've hit the wall. Doors open on the Ferrari. And Gregoire Sosi is not going to get very far with that broken rear suspension. It's a very long way back to the pits here. Both cars are out. I will need to cross the track with the service van. We are under virtual safety car. So I'm deploying the van on track. Please be advised. Contact in traffic there between Algar Pro United Autosports there. LMP2 Pro Am cars and pit stops underway here at Spa Francorchamps. Replay in Redion. Clement Overlack in the Inter Europol car, just losing it as he crests the rise. Managed not to hit anything, but that will destroy the tyres. There is Gregoire Sosi 
leaving the Richamil by TDS car behind. Race leaders are in the pits. Into your pole, this will be a driver change. Sebastian Alvarez handing over to Vladislav Lomko. Tomo Miata at Cool Racing taking over from Lorenzo Flusa. They head out of the pits. Filippo Gran, the new race leader, comes out in front of Robert Kubica in the AO by TF car. He drops in behind the LMP3 leader. It's been all changed in LMGT3. This is now our leader. Derek Dubois handing over to Casper Stevenson, the racing spirit of Le Mans, Aston Martin. It's been a topsy-turvy race so far. Quite a number of damaged cars. Some are out of the race, like the Formula Racing Ferrari. Some still going, like the number 25 Algarve Pro LMP2 car. Overall, I think there's quite a bit of damage to the car. I think the team did a mega job in the strategy to keep us in the, in the race in the position we still are. Uh, I had a lot of vibrations from the tires through after that uh, incident, but the race is still long. A lot can happen. As we see, there is a lot of incidents, so we try to make the best out of what we, what we can still. No time for musical chairs. We're going back to green. It is Filippo Gran who leads for United Autosports behind the LMP3 leader. Here comes Robert Kubica. He's in second place. Then another P3 Virage car. Here's the battle for third. Down the inside comes Returmo Miata. Vladislav Lomko in the yellow and green car holds him off though for third place in LMP2. They're mixing with the LMP3 front runners. There's Team Virage second in P3. And behind now, here come the LMP2 cars. Potomo Miata, right behind him, Rashad De Geras, and then Stefan Richelmi for Vector Sport. Oli Caldwell, Algarve Pro. Matteo Cairoli's in there. Alessio Rivera, the Pro Am leader there, and Fabio Scherer for United Auto Sports as well. Massive battle going on here. And actually, Alessio Rivera with the turquoise side door panels is moving up the order. So too there goes the United car, Fabio Scherer. He got ahead of Matteo Cairoli in the yellow and black iron Lynx car. There's the Algarve Pro, blue and black Oli Caldwell. Right behind him, Matteo Cairoli. Then the red, white and blue of United's Fabio Scherer. And there comes the cool racing car of Frederick Vesti. The iron Lynx car getting dropped to the back of that little queue in traffic. Really hard at the restart with everybody still on coldish tyres. Here comes the battle for the lead of the race. Right behind the United Auto Sports car is the red and white of AO by TF. So Poland's Robert Kubica all over the back of Romanian driver Filip Ogran was a quarter of a second at the line. It's just about that now, but Kubica's got a really good run coming out of Arouge and up the Camel Straight. Ugrand defending hard, Kubica having to go the long way round the outside, there is room if you can make it survive, and he does, stays on track, Kubica the new leader. Battle for second in LMGT3, the purple Aston Martin, grid motorsport by TF, that is Johnny Adam, the factory Aston Martin driver, head of Esteban Masson in the Kessel Racing car guy Ferrari. Teenager Masson. Taking on Johnny Adam, one of the best GT racers in the business. And the Ferrari looks like it's got a good run here. Johnny Adam is going to have to defend hard. The Aston Martin should just about keep its nose in front up the straight. But the Ferrari's got the toe now. Let's see if Esteban Masson can pull off something. Has to stay behind as to get to Lake Homme. The race leader, Casper Stevenson, there he is with the yellow nose just in front of them. That's your one, two, three. Vlad Lomko for into Europol, charging up behind Philip Bulgrand. He's got a really good run going here as well. He's going to pull out up the straight. Where's the LMP3 car going to be? He can't go inside. He might have to go outside here. Robert Kubitz are pulling away from this battle for second place. Philip Bulgrand can't quite hold on. And Vladislav Lomko goes around the outside. He's up to second place, Ugrand down to third. Rotomo Miata ahead of the battle for fourth place. Philip Ugrand, United Autosports, under attack from Rashad Dejeris in the blue Edex Sport car with the gold highlights. Dejeris looking for a way through. They're still in traffic and that's making life tough. Philip Ugrand hangs on, but he didn't get a good run there. Into Piff Puff, Dejeris goes straight by him. There's more traffic in front of him on the exit, though. 
and he's getting held up as well. But Filippo Grant can't get through into campus. His chance might come up the hill because the Edex ball car is still stuck behind the Ferrari. Now he gets a chance to go through. But Filippo Grant was on the throttle earlier and then this long climb up to the bus stop. He's got momentum. Rashad De Geris has the inside line. So De Geris hangs on, but closing in behind them fast, the white vector sport car. That's Stefan Michelmi. He's coming up really quickly as they go side to side into the bus stop. Michelmi's right with them. There's contact at the apex. De Geris goes out very wide, slow off the corner, Philip Ugran. Here comes Stefan Michelmi. He goes by Ugran. Is he going to go down the inside of Rashad De Geris? He is indeed. Picks up both places into the bus stop. So Rochelmi goes up to fourth place because Edek and United both got held up behind a GT3 car. Racing Spirit Le Mans still leading in LMGT3. There's Johnny Adam and right behind is the Vector Sport car of Stefan Rochelmi. Now he's fourth place overall. He's got Rashad Tijeris right behind him and Philip Ulgrand in the United car as well. But this time it's Richelme's turn to be held up by the GT3 car. And here comes Rashad Tijeris. He is going to go around the outside. He takes fourth. Battle for the lead in LMP3. The red car is Louis Rossi for ultimate on the brakes. Inside Alexander Matchell in car number four from DKR Engineering. Outbraked himself a little bit. Matchell comes back ahead of Louis Rossi. Good effort by Rossi, but he couldn't quite hold it. Through goes the Edex Sport car as well. Ritomo Miata. Whoa, and off. Alexander Matchell. Miata not being very kind in traffic. Matchell somehow held on to that massive moment. And the pendulum swings back to Louis Rossi. He now has the lead in LMP3. Here's our LMP2 Pro Am battle for third place. United Auto Sports, Andy Merrick. And through on the inside, Richard Bradley. He dived late into La Source and Andy Merrick only just kept the car out of the gravel. Yellow-nosed car of Bernardo Pinheiro, Team Virage, second place in LMP3 as P2 cars come by. Right behind him is Antoine Docan who gets a run on him. He was distracted by the LMP3 cars, I think. Pinheiro didn't see Docan coming in hot and Docan with a little shoulder check in the bus stop moves up into second place. Not all done yet though, Bernardo Pinheiro in that Virage car trying to come back. Such a crazy race that Duquesne are in third despite a spin at one of the restarts being held up behind an LMP3 car. Bad news for Rasmus Lint. Here comes the red and white car of Robert Kubitz and down the inside. Lint just in the inside of the LMP3 car. Tiny touch, they both survive. But Robert Kubitz has moved up to third for AO by TF. Play of Sharmalesi for Panis, passing Algar Prozoli Caldwell for eighth in LMP2. LMP3 leader in the pits, car number four, Alexander Matt Schulner. He's out, handing over to Wyatt Brikacek, his American co driver. Robert Kubitzer is done as well, the AO by TF, handing over to Louis Delatraz, the man who claimed pole. Jan van Eyte taking over from Richard de Geras at Edex Sport. They're still in the hunt as well. And Tom Dillman leaps aboard the number 43 into Europol car, taking over from Vladislav Lomko. Dillman rejoining. Louis Delatraz coming round La Source in LMP3 traffic. And out comes Tom Dillman, not too far behind him. Panis and United 1 2. The into Europol car going to have to build up some heat in the tyres. Already, that's been done by AO by TF. The chase is on. Nearly three hours gone, and it's an LMP2 Pro-Am car that leaves. There it is, Alessio Rivera, the AF Corsa car, the chrome and zebra stripe livery, if you like, but not too far behind him. Charles Milesi for Panis got by the Aston Martin, so he's now got a clear view of his target. Final driver change for AF Corsa. Matteo Vaxivier taking over the 83 car. Duquesne's James Allen under real pressure still from Marty Jakobsen in the cool racing car. Malta's got a great run here. This is the battle for fifth in LMP2 and it's over. Malta Jakobsen gets by before the braking area and moves up the place. And that is an absolutely classic spa move. 
race leaders Panis into the final stop. Winners from pole last time out in Imola. And United coming into, and that means AO by TF have the lead of the race. This is Louis Delatraz crosses the line and up into first spot ahead of their rivals. But still nearly an hour of racing to go. On board with our LMP3 leader down into Eau Rouge. And then climbing Redion over the blind brow and up the Camel Strait. That's Adam Ali for Euro International. And following him, the battle for fifth place. Maceo Capietto in the Iron Lynx Proton car, then Filippi Drugovic for Vector Sport and Job van Oetert for EDEC. That's fifth, sixth, seventh. Drugovic looking to go around the outside, moves up to fifth. Oh, and Job van Oetert's gone off there. Came back on with no dramas though. Tom Dillman in the yellow and green into your pull car in second place, working his way through this LMP3 battle for third. Oh, contact! Antoine Docar could not avoid the back of him. Dillman's car stopped faster. So Docar ran just into the back of him. Still chasing DKR's Wyatt Brickercheck. And Dillman goes inside Brickercheck. Looks like the interior pull car is okay. Battle for sixth place in LMP2, Matteo Capietto in the black and yellow Iron Lynx Proton car. And up the inside, Luca Giotto from Inter Europol grabs the position. Here's the battle for fourth now. Filippi Drugovic for Vector Sport, white and blue, and lunging to the inside. Late lunge. Jov van Oetert sends it deep on the inside. That's a block pass. It's very hard to come back around in the bus stop. So van Oetert grabs fourth. And there's still over 40 minutes of racing to go. And Drugovic looking both ways as he tries to retake the place. Brazilian Daniel Serra about to take over the LMGT3 leading Kessel Racing car guys. Ferrari as Esteban Masson steps out. Final pit stop for AO by TF. Into the last half hour and the race leaders into Europol stop. Last stop for Panis. Disaster in LMGC3 for Julian Andlau and Proton. They picked up a puncture. They were third in the class. It's a very long drive back. 10 minutes to go and the racing is still intense. Jop van Oetert trying to put a move on Malte Jakobsen. And the Dutchman goes by the Dane. A change for third place inside the final 10 minutes now. And Panis right there as well. Charles Malacy looking to try and get by Malte Jakobsen as well. Has he got fresher tyres? Through he comes. He's up to fourth. Jakobsen down to fifth. Well, it's all about the podium positions now in the final few minutes. Across the start-finish line, here comes the Edex Sport car. Jop van Oetert under pressure from Panis' Charles Milesi. And still in it is Malte Jakobsen. This is third, fourth and fifth. And now up to third goes Milesi. Team loving that. Racing Sprint Le Mans Aston in the final podium position in LMGT3. Valentin Asaclodo under pressure from Nico Veroni in the AF Corsa car. The Argentine all over the back of the French driver. This could be a change. Asaclodo not quite as quick out of the bus stop. And up to La Source, the Ferrari looks outside. He thought about cutting inside, but he couldn't. He's going to have to go the long way round and trust his rival, who does give him racing room. And the Ferrari moves up to third. Well, that was a committed move, but it paid off. <laughs> Alex Lynn in the pits, loose bodywork on the Algar Pro Kart, and that's the legacy of getting hit by the Ferrari early on. Alta Jakobsen right behind Charles Malacy on the inside. The cool racing driver scoots up into fifth place at the bus stop. There'll be one more lap after this, and unbelievably, both teams are reporting a slow puncture on their cars. It's going to be a long last two laps for both drivers, trying not to go too fast and cause a blowout that wrecks the car and their points. Replay at the top of the hill, and this is how Luca Giotto for Inter Europol took fourth place away from Charles Milesi. 
Louis Delatraz can not relax yet. Final lap here at Spa after four hours of racing, but Tom Dillman is right with him in the Indy Europol car. It was only eight tenths of a second at the line, but he has crept away a fraction more as they start the long climb up the hill. The checkered flag will be ready. AO by TF from pole position. A time that Louis Delatraz set to grab the top spot in qualifying. And it is fitting that he will have the honor of taking the checkered flag. Vichy for AO by TF, who in the last three races have been third, second, and now first from pole position. This is a team in a rich vein of form. It was close for seconds. Idexport taking third. AF Corsa in eighth, winning in LMP2 Pro Am. And the LMP3 winners, Euro International, they finished just outside the top 20. Kessel Racing leading in LMGT3. They claim victory for Ferrari. And it was yet another classic, hectic spa encounter. This place is always a thriller. Competition is very high, very tough, uh, many competitive cars, so uh, it's all about small details. And uh, yeah, uh, as Louis said, we are on the uh, improving curve. So uh, of course, winning is always nice, but it will never be easy. So we have to keep focus and uh, uh, there's still uh, two races to go. And uh, we, we hope we'll be fighting for the title until the end. Johnny Edgar, Louis Delatraz and Robert Kubica take victory in Spa-Francorchamps. And with it, they move to the top of the point standings, just two ahead. Into Europol's 43 car and 28 from EDEC Sport, the same positions as on the podium here in Spa. Mathematically, anyone in the top 10 could be champion with two races remaining. You certainly can't count out Panis, Cool Racing, United Autosports or Algarve Pro. And of course, you're back to their winning ways in LMP2 Pro-Am after victory in Barcelona. This is win number two for Alessio Rivera, Mathieu Vaxivier and Francois Perodo. Yes, indeed, a lot of uh, ups and downs. It, uh, it was a tough start for me. I did a mistake and then I had to carry a flat spot for my double stint. And I'll be honest, I think we were a little bit lucky with the safety car, but you know, sometimes you need a bit of luck with, uh, with those races because it was tough. A lot of things happened, so very happy for the championship. Two wins, a second and a fourth place. The results so far for AF Corsa in LMP2 Pro-Am. They have been in really good form. Proton competition takes second here with Algarve Pro in third. And the points favor AF Corsa, 20 ahead of Algarve Pro. Richard Mill by TDS in third. But with 52 points on offer, there are still seven title contenders. Our LMP3 race winners had a top seat Hervey race as well, but they came out on top. Victory for Adam Alley and Matthew Bell. Third in Barcelona, fourth in Le Castellet, and then victorious in Imola and here in Spa. A mega team effort. This was it today. The strategy was perfect, like it put us back in the running for the win. And obviously that with the pace, the car was mega. I mean, I just, I can't believe we went first, last, first, just buzzing. Clear indication this really is a team sport, not just about the drivers. Racing Spirit of Le Mans takes second, Cool Racing in third, but it's RLR M Sport who chase your international with Team Virage third in the standings. And again, the championship is still wide open with two more rounds. Kessel Racing car guys, Ferrari top the podium here in Spa in LMGT3. Takeshi Kimura, Esteban Masson and Daniel Serra. And it was LMGT3 that was perhaps the hardest hit in terms of attrition of all four classes. Nevertheless, the Kessel drivers kept it together. Extremely happy, first podium of the year, first win. Uh, the race was just amazing. We had an amazing car today. So big thanks to the to the team, to the teammates, of course. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, continue like this for the last two races. Kessel Racing finding the podium at last. 
TR Racing and AF Corsa make it a Ferrari clean sweep in LMGT3 in Spa. Racing Spirit of Le Mans have a single point advantage and just one win covers the top nine cars. It's nice to be in front, but this really is anyone's LMGT3 title to win. Next time out at Mugello in Italy, we will narrow down our title hopefuls. We'll see you there. <laughs>